The connection between the control box and the ADD head is via the supply 25 pin cable. It is very important that the supply cable is used and when fitted is firmly connected. To fit, correctly orientate the D connector, align and push firmly home into the socket. Tighten both securing screws to ensure a correct connection is made. We also supply this additional support assembly. Simply take this section, lift the control box up and sit it under the D connector. This slides forwards and is then secured by using the two supplied M3 screws. This requires a 2.5mm Allen key. Simply drop the two screws into the holes and lightly tighten them down. The lid is secured using four screws. This requires a small Phillips head screwdriver. This assembly, when fitted, will ensure that a correct connection is made and reduce strain on the cable and internal PCBs. At the head end, there is a similar arrangement. The 25Y D connector plugs into the socket. Once again, ensure that the plug and socket are firmly pushed together and secured using the two screws. The correct connection of the cable at either end is very important. If this is not correct, then the unit could show errors. The unit is powered using a supplied 24 volt power brick. The plug-in simply plugs into the socket and the control unit labelled 24 volts in. The display's CAT5 cable plugs into the socket labelled touchscreen display. At the keypad end, plug the other end of the CAT5 cable into the socket on the touchscreen display. It is possible to rotate the head of the ADED manually. Before switch on power, ensure that the head is roughly in the vertical position. This does not need to be accurate, just roughly in the vertical position. We can now power on the unit. Switch the on-off switch down to the on position. After a pause, you will hear the cooling fan start. The five green power supply status LEDs will illuminate. The controller status will display the number 2. We can now press start on the touchscreen display and the machine will date on each of its axes in turn. The syringe, the carriage, the inversion and the plunger. Once the machine is dating, the carriage here should be in the correct position to accept the vial shield. The orientation of the vial shield has the sheath holder away from the unit. It has a tapered section that aligns with the tapered jaws of the carriage. So if correctly aligned, the vial shield should, with very little effort, load into the jaws. It is lightly held into position with two magnets, one on the vial shield and one on the jaws. If it is slightly out of position, then the height and level can be adjusted. Each foot has a leveling screw. Use a flat bladed screwdriver to make small adjustments. Lower or raise these feet to level or raise the position of the carriage. Make small adjustments until the vial shield slides in smoothly. With the unit we supply two cover caps. Once the unit is level, Simply fit these into the two holes to remove any bug traps. The unit is now ready to use. The valve shield consists of two parts. The base, which has rollers on the underside to aid movement, and the lid. This is fitted with a sheath holder, which we will discuss later. 
The shield is designed to take a 30mm vial with a maximum diameter of 37.5 by 69mm high. The vial simply drops into the shield. For other vials we can supply inserts that the vial sits into to mimic the diameter and the length of a 30mm vial. The lid simply engages into lower shields to form the full assembly. The assembly is manufactured from a plastic outer with the main body being made from tungsten. The tungsten thickness surrounding the vial is 18mm thick. The side of the vial shield has a reflective area here. When in position, this is picked up by the optical sensor on the body. When the vial shield assembly is in position, the machine knows if the shield has been correctly loaded. The syringe shields are specifically designed for each make and type of syringe, so each syringe has its own different type of shield. The syringe shield consists of two parts, the plastic upper and the tungsten body with a 9mm wall thickness. The design ensures that the syringe is held centrally and is sized to the correct length of the body. The syringe shields shown here are for a 5mm BND, a 10mm BND and a 3mm BND. The front of each shield is fitted with a coloured cap. This relates to the dial on the top of the unit. So when fitted, ensure that the coloured cap on the syringe shield matches the colour on the cap on the dial. For example, this is a 5mm BND syringe shield. This has a grey cap, so we need to rotate the selector on the top of the unit to the grey position. This ensures that the plunger on the syringe and the slot on the unit are compatible. The first thing to do when loading the syringe is to remove the sheath. Simply drop the syringe into the shield and pull the sheath down into the holder. To fill a syringe, press fill on the keypad. Input the required value. In this case, 1.1 milliliters. Press enter to start the fill. The syringe will move in. The plunger draws up air equal to the fill volume and the carriage begins to lift. The head inverts and the air is injected into the vial. This is to keep the pressure in the vial at the end of the fill equal. The plunger is now moved in and out a few times to wet the internal bore of the syringe and reduce bubbles. It then squeezes and holds. It is now filling the syringe. The head inverts and moves the syringe to the unload position. Once the fill is complete, the unit can recap the needle sheath. Press recap. The carriage lifts, automatically aligning the needle and the sheath. Simply apply light pressure to engage the sheath. Press lower to lower the carriage. With the empty routine, you can partially or fully empty the syringe. Press empty. The syringe will move into the empty position. Type in the amount to empty and press enter. The carriage will lift, engage and align the needle into the vial. Press OK to confirm that the shield has loaded correctly. Cancel if not. The unit will now empty the required amount from the syringe into the vial. Once done, it will lower the carriage and then bring the syringe into the unload position. The add routine gives you the ability to add product from a previously filled syringe. Press add. The syringe now move in and the system will ask if the syringe has loaded OK. If it has loaded correctly, then press yes. In this example, we are adding 0.5 milliliters. Press enter to lift the shield up. The unit will invert and draw the additional volume required. It will then invert Lower the carriage and move the syringe into the unload position. Quantity specific or QS fill. This function allows the unit to add product to a pre filled syringe. For example, we can pre fill a syringe with 1.5 milliliters of saline ready to add product. Press QS fill. Enter the pre filled volume 1.5 milliliters and press enter. 
The plunger will now move to the correct position to accept the pre-filled syringe. Drop the syringe into the shield. You can now use the add function as before. The unit can accept a whole range of syringes. To change, press more and more again and then select. Press change, press back or next to move through the available syringes. Once the required syringe is shown, then press select and the unit will now ask to confirm the changes. The plunger will now zero. The character will raise, lifting the existing shield up to aid removal. Lift the existing shield out and fit the new shield. Ensure that the doll on the top of the unit matches the colour of the cap of the shield. Press enter to lower the carriage. As with any other computer control device, occasionally it will need resetting. To do this, press stop, press reboot, press settings and press reset. Then press yes to reset to the factory defaults. You will then need to press start to datum the unit.